The most amusing thing about the Tintin books, to me, would be, uh, I suppose, the subtle hum humour of it all, the, uh, the different characters created by her, Jay. I like it being in the past because you can actually relate to it with all the cars being old-fashioned. Yeah, I think the funniest thing are the pictures because, like, how you can tell what their expressions are with the drawings. It's really good. The success of the company really is partly in its timeless quality and partly its universal application. It's the kind of company you can understand anywhere from Africa to Europe. It's, it's people's faces, it's people's reactions to things, it's things going wrong. Tintin himself began as a Boy Scout because Hergé was a Boy Scout till he was 20. Everybody was in Belgium in, in those days. When did you give birth to Tintin? It was in 1929. But before that, I created for a Boy Scout uh, paper a little character called um, Totor. And after about a year, he swapped him for a young reporter called Tintin. And here is the very first edition of the Petit Vingtième comic for kids with Tintin. It's Tintin's first adventure. He goes off to Moscow to biff a lot of communists in the jaw. And uh, compared with what came later, it's pretty simple. First, when I began, I had no idea. It was a, it was a game. It was just fun for me to, 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 to tell a story. But I didn't know from week to week what would happen to my hero. You can break uh, the Tintin books down into, into sections quite easily. I mean, when he started, they were very naive, very happy-go-lucky, not, not much plot, just a string of jokes, um, because at that stage he wasn't writing books. Uh, when it became clear how big it was, he wrote proper stories, and he ended up doing what was really political satire. And in the war, he goes into uh, another type of comedy, uh, which is character comedy, very escapist stuff, explorers, and that's when he brings in people like Haddock and Professor Calculus. And, and this goes on until around about the, the 50s, um, and it culminated in the Moon books. And then as he got older, he went into a much more reflective phase. And the final books are really um, seeing the world through Captain Haddock rather than Tintin. The adventures really happened to them rather than them going out and seeking. I think the funniest thing about the Tintin books are the pictures, really, because they make them look really realistic and funny. My favourite book is probably Tintin in America because I like Red Indians and that he is just good because oh, after three or four pages it, like, comes to life when you read it. The early books, um, that's Russia, the Congo and America, which is sort of east, south and west, which is simple travelogues. They were really based on films, um, you know, the kind of things Hergé would have seen in the cinema. So all the communists in the Russia book were, were grinning men with knives in their teeth and all the natives uh, in Africa had spears and hunted lions and everyone in America was a red Indian or a gangster. So they were very simplistic travelogues. They, didn't, they don't really stand the test of time. It really wasn't until Blue Lotus that he started to put everything together from the start as a proper constructed story. And here is the uh, original cover illustration of the Blue Lotus. Here's how it came out in the 1936 edition. In those days, of course, the books were black and white. Um, they didn't get into colour until the war, when he had a lot of time on his hands and took, went back and coloured them all. But they did come with colour plates, some of which were, were quite pretty.
Blue Lotus is a really important book, not just for Hergé, but for the whole of European comic strip art. Because up to that point, um, the readers of the magazine that Tintin was in were getting this sort of very primitive um, Tintin in America type stuff. And he was about to take Tintin to China, and he said this in the magazine, in the Petit Vantium. And he got a letter from the teacher to a group of Chinese students who said to him, whatever you do, please don't make China the Fu Manchu film version of China, pigtails and bird's nest soup and torturing babies. He said, please talk to my students and get a real picture of China. And so Chang Chon Ren was introduced to Hergé, and Hergé and Chang became really, really great friends. And Chang persuaded him to do masses and masses of research. So you see here there are drawings and drawings of um, furniture, of lanterns, of street scenes, of people. Every little detail is from the real China in 1934. Chang himself, of course, was an artist. So these pictures here are almost certainly drawn by Chang of the, uh, the much more Chinese style of the tree and the steps down the mountainside. Chang taught him how to draw uh, in ways that he hadn't known about before. He taught him uh, Chinese techniques such as perspective and this clear line style. Things he hadn't really learned about before because he was self-taught largely. And these techniques were, were brought into Tintin by Hergé and in, in turn they were copied by the whole of comic strip art in Europe in the 20th century. He valued his influence so much that he made Chang into a character in the book who saves Tintin's life. This madman who has taken this drug gets this sword and says to Tintin, so I'm going to cut off your head. The madman's got this friendly swell around you. When you first see him, you think that he hasn't gone for water for days. Chang comes in and shoots off the head of the sword, and the madman cries because he's lost his sword. Chang also politicised Hergé because it was Chang who taught Hergé all about the Japanese invasion of China, which the West was rather hushing up. This was some time before they attacked America in World War II, and uh, it was through Chang that Hergé came to fill the book with anti-Japanese slogans, which got the Japanese government so annoying. The uh, most interesting thing about the Blue Lotus was the, uh, the way it educated people um, about the past. Um, the way, for instance, the South Mancurian uh, Railway being blown up. And the way it involved...